My name is Sabah Kole, and I'm an education entrepreneur um, based currently from Cambridge. Um, I co-founded uh, an innovation center for middle and high school students. It's a full-time immersive program. We get students from the local areas, from the Boston-Cambridge area for a three-month period who come to our program um, to basically develop their uh, creative learning problem-solving skills. And yeah. Yeah, maybe we'll do it in, in, in shorter, okay. shorter steps, you know, to yeah. give us the entire story all at once. So, uh, you start with 11 years old, you said. Yes. Uh, what do they expect if they come to your program? They stay with you for three months, mm -hmm. you said? Yes, what are they, they do. doing? How do they have to apply? So, we have an open admissions policy for students. So, whoever is interested, firstly, um, and ready to take on some challenges uh, to be in a more open, non-structured environment, uh, which we help guide the students along that process, but they have to be open to it. If um, And so uh, that open admissions policy, we have a very informal interview. They come, they talk to the students who are there at the studio. They get to see the type of projects that uh, the students are working on, and they get a feel for it. And if it seems like they're comfortable, then we start right up based on when uh, they can start up. But this means that they have to get off their school for yeah. three months. How do you handle it? So there's a couple of ways. We have partnerships with schools in the areas, and if the students are attending those partner schools, then the program is a part of um, their high school or middle school experience, so they're allowed to take that time off. In other instances, we have students who are coming independently. So they have actually taken off three months from their regular school, or we have some students who are there for the full year, in which case, we work with the school administrators to figure out, you know, is this uh, an okay time for them to leave, to be gone for a year, how can they make up classes that they're missing in the meantime. And usually the students and the parents are willing to uh, make that, you know, sacrifice, or it's not really a sacrifice, but they see the benefit of doing this type of program, um, and they make it work. And for a lot of high school students, um, there is a lot of extra uh, units uh, in the U.S. so that you could do, you could get elective credit. Um, so taking a trimester off isn't necessarily that difficult uh, from okay. that perspective. Um, so what do they expect? What what can they do mm -hmm. after so they, the three months? After the three months. So after they finish uh, the program, if, well first of all when they finish they also produce a portfolio. That's a uh, part of a sort of our assessment, so they also have a collection and a body of, of all the projects that they've worked on, um, their own sort of reflections and descriptions on, on those projects, which then they can take to for internships, for college applications, so that's one part of it. The second part is, for them, uh, we really hope that they then feel like they independently are have the confidence to actually initiate projects themselves, so if they're particularly interested in in exploring, you know, making some type of documentary film. We've had students who've done this. Um, and they kind of come back and forth to our studio, um, working after school or on the weekends, and we help support them. But it's essentially, they, they feel like they, they can now take charge and lead small teams and actually develop projects on their own. So, and that for us is kind of uh, uh, a really important part. The second part is also, or the third part is, the students returning back to their home schools and actually being, um, you know, serving to change the culture of the schools that they're a part of. And we see that happening especially with our partner schools because we get a, a you know, a good, con a good number of students who then are actually working in their classrooms. They're actually being a lot more, you know, vocal. They're initiating projects. They're getting the teachers to actually think differently. Um, they're, in they're very inspirational for the other students. Um, and they are really amazing leaders. And so we've actually seen um, not only the culture of some of the, our partner schools changing, but uh, the curriculum um, from one of our founding partner schools. They're actually looking to change their entire um, uh, schedule in terms of classes to make it more open-ended, adding some more project-based elements. We teach, see the teachers incorporating more kind of um, interesting ways to, to even get the students understanding like mathematical or physics concepts. Mm -hmm. So these are the kind of changes that we've seen um, on more of a gradual basis that are happening back at the home But schools. aren't you doing something uh, what usually sh schools should do? 
Yes. <laughs> but the thing is... I mean, it's actually a shame, especially in an area like Boston yes. or Massachusetts, where, I mean, the educational level is, is pretty it's very high. very high. That, you know, an initiative like yours... Should is, be commonplace. It, <laughs> it should be simply like this in every school, shouldn't it? It should. But the interesting thing is we have um, very old even high schools. We have some schools in the area who are about 100 to 150 years old. Um, but even at the college level, the type of work that we're doing, which is really multidisciplinary, working in small teams, I would say that um, most even undergraduate students don't get that experience. I would say some graduate students might get the t that type of experience, but it's very, it's not just um, a Boston area thing, but it's very, I mean, it's commonplace that to change, I mean, the academic institutions are have been around for a while, and to try and change them is a difficult thing. And a place like the Media Lab is is at, at MIT is very unique, and you would think that the rest of the university was like that, or had um, you know groups of small teams working together and problem solving. And but it's not the case. Um, and so, but we are slowly seeing certain changes, and people need examples sometimes to see that hey, this this can work. Mm -hmm. um, and there's also, you know, we have our state level exams. So a lot of the high school students in Massachusetts, they have to. Um, there's a Massachusetts state exam that happens on the tenth grade, which is a big part of um, what students are actually trying to study towards. So it makes it difficult to change things when there's so many measures in place that. Um, that teachers need to be accountable for and then students need to be accountable for. So, you know, we decided we didn't want to change education by working within that system, but actually going outside of it so that we could actually change it from the outside in yeah. some ways. So maybe this is what I'm going to ask you next, some little bit provocative, mm -hmm. but why didn't you start a private school starting with preschoolers? Mm -hmm. Because I honestly, I do think that when you start at the age of 11, mm -hmm. The students are already so much within this old mm -hmm. system that it's hard to get them out there. Yeah. So why not start earlier and really provide for, you know, preschoolers and then starting with grade one, such a yeah. kind of thing. No, it's it's a really good question, and I think um, we would like to head in that direction. I think the reason why, you know, uh, it's interesting. Even right now, we're working between middle school and high school, and. Um, it's really exciting, first of all, working with high school students because you can um, work with them on the same level. You know, they're they're thinking critically, so you can actually have very thoughtful conversations and, and dialogue with them. Um, but then, as you go younger, you get this amazing sort of more raw, imaginative energy, and which is totally untapped. And what they lose on the way, you yeah, know, and they completely to lose high that. So, so I think what we do is very similar to kind of the kindergarten level, which is definitely more exploratory, um, more about breaking the rules, making mistakes, and finding out, you know, how things work. And uh, I see ourselves sort of heading uh, younger, uh, but I think it would require a different, you know, different basically scaling down our projects in terms of our, obviously our, even our expectations, um, but they would be definitely very different and I think it's something that we would actually have to figure out how we how can we do the type of projects but uh, mm -hmm. more for that particular age group so yeah. so you said you started out two years ago mm -hmm. what happened in these two years um, it was we learned a lot um, well one of the things that's still uh, in progress is every three months we're getting new students um, and it's really scary every three months because we start almost from scratch again because the students are new, they are unfamiliar to each other, they're learning, getting to know us, and um, and we never know what that you know what the what the social um, you know what that combination of students how they're how they're going to work with each other how are they going to work with us, and because they're coming from different parts of uh, of the area from different geographical areas, different income groups. Yeah. So there is a lot of, um, you know, just learning happening um, socially outside of kind of more of the critical thinking, problem solving, but it's about understanding differences and learning to actually work together. 
And so we never know what that combination is going to be like. And some trimesters, even though we've been doing this for now two years, we, we have um, gotten a group of students where it's, you know, it's really challenging. Even though we might be doing the same things in terms of methodology, we'll still have some of the most amazing coaches that we brought in. But we might just have a group of students who just, you know, there might be a couple of students who just don't get along. You know, there's a lot of maybe emotional uh, family uh, stuff that's happening at home, which affects how they're, how they're doing in the studios. Everyone, I think, gets something out of it and is transformed by the experience. But um, we like to always focus on, you know, the, the creating part and, and, and having everyone put their energy really directed towards that instead mm -hmm. of dealing with necessarily issues at home. And so I think that has been one of our, you know, challenges is trying to, um, in certain situations when uh, we don't necessarily have that support structure of a big school that would have, you know, a counseling office and, um, but we're, we're, we are those people, everybody, the coaches then become part of that system, so it's very one-on-one, -on -one. and so every day is for us a new day, and mm -hmm. we're always working, we're working very closely with the students and the coaches um, to, to make sure things are, everyone's happy and everyone's mm -hmm. making the best out of the experience. How many uh, students you take per, per uh, trimester? Per trimester, we have about 30 to 35 students. And what is the student-teacher ratio? So we have a maximum of uh, 12 students per studio, and we usually have two coaches for okay. that 12, and then we have our support team, too, who jumps in, um, depending on the complexity of the projects that they're mm. going to be designing and developing. Mm. So we talked earlier, your roots are here in India, where we are sitting right mm -hmm. now in uh, Pune. Uh, why did you start this in Boston and not here in India? <laughs> um, and what are the plans yes. when you come to India? Well, we started in Boston, Cambridge, because that's where the three co-founders, uh, that's where we met, and um, it seemed like a good place. We had a lot of connections to people and um, uh, a good body of schools to work with and really experiment with. So it seemed like a great environment, and our goal is now to come to India. I'm very interested in bringing this program here. Um, I feel like India is, is you know, in a really exciting moment um, where you know the population is very young, and they're interested in in doing something. And and there's a lot. I think by uh, even in the more rural areas, what I've seen is, and I've lived kind of. My, I have family here in um, in Maharashtra. And I have a good sense, I've, I've lived in the kind of cities and then sort of the smaller towns and then also seen village life. And I see that, you know, even in the smaller towns specifically, there's a lot of entrepreneurship happening. Um, and it's, it's definitely, it's in, the, it's in the blood because you're kind of doing it from day to day where you have to remain, um, you know, if you have a small business, you need to constantly be evolving and changing to see what, what people are, what people's needs are, um, and how can you be the first one to bring it out there, and, and then there'll be maybe five or ten other companies that try and emulate you, and, and that's the way you sort of see this sort of progress happening in the small towns, and for me that's really exciting, um, and, and, um, and so I, I feel like this type of program that we're doing would be a very natural fit, in, in specifically in areas like this, because I think it's, it's more natural to them, um, rather than in some places where there isn't, you know, natural entrepreneurship happening. A lot of people might have be taking up jobs and um, and they know that route, which is more about, okay, what are what are the things that I need to do today? Someone's giving me my tasks for the day. Very different type of mentality. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm really excited about bringing the program here with the team and then working with uh, locals, um, community members, organizations, and, um, and teachers and, co and kind of collecting a community of coaches who can actually then, you know, be role models for youth here um, and not sort of that traditional teacher-student relationship which has defined uh, the educational model here in India. Yeah. So thanks a lot. I'm really looking forward to your talk tomorrow. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs>